What's up guys, it's Max from Stakeholder Power. Today I will start a new series. I will call it Story Time, where I basically tell you stories of my life, at least some parts. And today I will begin with the first story, how everything started with the brand. To do that, I would like to talk about my influences first. I started doing graffiti by the age of 13, back in 1991. And my first pieces I did on the Berlin Wall. Back then, it was shortly after the Berlin Wall crashed down and East Germany and West Germany and started to unite again. So back then, Berlin was a place, I mean, people had real problems. And also they didn't, in the, since I'm, I'm, I grew up in the east, in the eastern part of uh, Berlin, they didn't know much about graffiti. And also they had other problems. So it was the perfect playground for a young kid um, that just discovered you can go out and put your name everywhere you want to <laughs> want to have it. So, yeah, and also um, back in 1991, um, graffiti became really popular um, whenever it was in the East or in the West of um, Berlin. Berlin that time was called the New York of Europe because New York is where the graffiti came from and where it developed in the 80s, late 70s, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, and my second big influence is music. I'm a musician. I play the guitar. I remember that I that I went to this shitty music store. The name was Blue Note. And I bought the cheapest, I don't know, I don't know if, if it's the cheapest, but a cheap black electric guitar that looked like metal for me. It was a Semic. And a cheap fucked up amplifier. And I started right away playing black metal. And it took me four weeks until I find a drummer. I couldn't play shit back then, but he was actually pretty good. The only problem with him was he had some drug problems. <laughs> so we started to we started to build a band. It was called Primitive. My first band, black metal band, where I was the singer and the um, and the rhythm guitar player. I also will try to find some reference pictures about that. I hope I can find. So that's both of my bigger influences. I'm a graffiti artist and I'm a musician. And with both influences, it makes totally sense to later end up with a clothing brand. Because in graffiti, you have to put your name out. You need to put your name out. Because you want to, be, you want to become famous. Everyone should see your name. On walls, on trains, everywhere. On famous places, they should see your tag, your piece. And the music... It's actually the same. You want to become famous. You have to put your name out. You need to put your name out. You want to play shows. You want to show your music. You want to show your logo. You want to create an image. And the same is, is with the brand. You need to get famous. You need to put your name out. You, you need a logo. You need to scream out in this world, here I am. 
So, at the end, it makes totally sense that, that I came up with creating a brand like Stakeholder Apparel. But that's not how Stakeholder Apparel was invented. To be really honest, it started totally different. Back in 2011, I went to uh, the SAE Institute and studied audio engineering because I wanted to become an audio engineer. Basically, I wanted to be able to give my bands a better sound, a problem that I wanted to solve. So back then, I, I met my best friend, Debo because he was on the same school and he was also studying audio engineering. And after we both um, finished our study, we dreamed of um, having our own studio where we can produce the best music for the coolest bands, coolest metal bands from our area. And back then we just started our career so we didn't have any money and we thought because we had that dream to to get a real real great studio with a lot of outboard gear only the best nice carpets and a big studio and we thought it it might be a good idea to start a t-shirt business to sell a lot of t-shirts, make a lot of money, and then buy a studio from that money. And yeah, we did it. We started the brand. And it was called Stay Cold Straight Edge. Because in that time, we both have been straight edge for several years. And the problem was that in Europe, or especially in Germany, you couldn't get any merch, any straight edge merch. You had to go all the way to the US and order from there. It was expensive. Shipping times were horrible. And also shipping was expensive. So we thought, okay, we, we will solve this problem by creating a straight edge brand. And we called it Stakehold Straight Edge. The investment for both of us has been 700 euro for each. And the printing job was done by one of my friends, uh, Sebastian, that I knew from my graffiti background. I will look it up and see if I can find the first uh, products we put out back then. And this is something I will show you next time. So I will continue this story. Yeah, let me know if you are interested in something else or if I can do anything better. Like, comment, subscribe, and I wish you a nice day.